Washington Journal continues. Well, we want to introduce you to Imam Yahya Hendi. He is the Muslim chaplain of Georgetown University. We saw a story in the Thursday's Washington Times. Here is the story. U.S.-backed imam gets cool reception in India. We saw the story. We read it. We wanted to invite the imam over to come and talk about this story. Do you travel on behalf of the U.S. government to Muslim countries to talk about American Muslims? I have done that uh, since, since 1998, yes. And wh where have you gone and what do you tell them? Well, I have been to Africa, to Asia, to the Middle East, Central Asia, East Europe, Europe, Australia, just about everywhere. My focus is what I call the untold story of America. America is a great not a country of a great heritage of wonderful people. And our story is not known. Many people around the world know America through the eyes maybe of some aspects of foreign policy. But America is not only its foreign policy. We are made of, of different religious communities, ethnic and racial communities. We have wonderful stories to tell. And our stories are not told. And I want Muslims around the world to appreciate America for what America has become. And that story has not been told. And I think American Muslims can better speak about the story of America to Muslims around the world. Well, that's our topic, is the uh, U.S. image in the Muslim world. That's what we want to hear from you on in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, we, we'd especially appreciate hearing from American Muslims and to get their viewpoints also. Um, numbers are on the screen. Uh, Imam, this is the headline. It said that you got a cool reception in India when yeah. you went to talk there. Actually, when I read the article, it was very shocking, very surprised, because I have been traveling since 1998, and I call this trip to India the best trip I have ever made in my life. 27,000 people ended up on the streets of India who knew exactly who I was, where I was coming, who was sponsoring my trip, ended up on the streets of India welcoming me to India to talk about Islam in America. So uh, the reception I have gotten from Indians was amazing and overwhelming. Then, then why this, this headline? I think uh, uh, Washington Times has to answer the question, why has the editor of Washington Times decided to change the story and give it a different, a different picture, a different image. A, 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 you know, the work that the Undersecretary Karen Hughes has been doing, the work of the State Department, and uh, our Foreign Service officers are doing an amazing job to introduce America to the outside world. And such an article gives the, the wrong image the bad image and not the right image about how our embassies are successfully working in the Muslim world. Now, how did you get started with the State Department in 1998? Well, I was asked if I would want to travel to Mali to a conference to speak about Islam in America. I welcome the idea. Representing the Clinton administration at that point? Well, it was not, you know, this is not uh, representing any administration. The State Department has been doing this for tens of years. What happens is that our embassies get invited in their local countries to represent America, to speak about America in a specific way. So what happened in that case, there was a conference in Mali, and they wanted an American speaker to speak about Islam in America. I was not representing the Clinton administration, and for my trip to India, I was not representing <coughs> Bush administration with my due respect to the administration. I am an American citizen who likes to talk about the American story. And what do you tell people, what, besides the positive things that you've listed, what do you tell Muslims abroad about America in a, that may be uh, considered negative? Well, well uh, I say, listen, America is a country of 300 million people. We have good and we have bad. We are not a perfect nation. Perfection belongs to God alone. So, yes, there have been mistakes made by individuals and in certain cases some government officials, but that does not represent the Constitution of America. It does not represent the true spirit of America. Overall, America is very welcoming to Islam. America is very welcoming to Muslims. And we continue to feel a part of this great nation of ours. And what do you hear from Muslims abroad about America? Well, there are two pictures. Some people feel very negative about America because of some aspects of its foreign policy. The war, the war in Iraq. Uh, uh, and some people feel good about America. Actually, 
overall, Muslims feel very really good about America. Very often people want me, they think I am con in control of the State Department. They want me to give them visas to come to know America. Do you hear more about uh, American support for Israel or the Iraq war? It seems to me that in the last three years, everyone has been talking about the war in Iraq, not the Arab-Israeli conflict. Everyone is focusing on the war in Iraq. And for me, that's wrong. That's sad. America is not only the war in Iraq. America is much beyond that. You know, I tell Muslims around the world, you know, whether you agree or disagree with the war in Iraq, America came in support of Muslims in Kosovo, in Bosnia. America came in support of Muslims in Somalia and many other places. So don't see America in light of one aspect of American foreign policy that you might disagree with. Georgetown is the first American university to hire a full-time Muslim chaplain. How long have you been there? Uh, since 1999. So. And uh, he's also the imam of the Islamic Society of Frederick, Maryland, and the Muslim ch and a the Muslim chaplain at the National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda. Where are you from, sir? I am originally uh, from uh, a Palestinian background. I became an American citizen almost 15 years ago, proudly so. And where did you study? Well, uh, I did my undergrad in Islamic theology at the University of Jordan. For my master's degree, I did it in a Christian theology at Hartford Seminary in Hartford, Connecticut. And my PhD work uh, was done at Temple University in Jewish theology and law. So I studied Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Imam Yahya Hendi is our guest. We're talking about the U.S. Uh, image in the Muslim world. First up, Westchester, New York. Yes, good morning. Good morning. I, um, I'm confused about your guest. I heard him speak once, and uh, I'm surprised he's from Palestine because he seems to have such a pro-Israeli uh, uh, point of view. Because I, I heard him speak once, and I was shocked. Where did you hear him I speak, don't know. I, I was down in Washington. I heard him speak at a, he was at a student uh, a gathering. And I think, he, I, I, don't, I don't understand what he's talking about as far as, uh, you know, um, I shouldn't say I shouldn't understand what he's talking about, but his point of view is so, it's so, uh, it sounds like he's being paid by the U.S. government, as your former guest was. Mom. Uh, well, um, I am paid by the State Department to travel. However, when I do travel, I speak my own mind, my own independent mind about America. In certain areas, I have been critical of the U.S. government. In other areas, I have been affirming uh, of, of some uh, po aspects of the U.S. Uh, foreign uh, policies. As I said, America is not uh, a country of two human beings. We are also diverse in, in, in America. We think differently. We have people who are for the war in Iraq. We have people who are against the war in Iraq. We have people who approve the American foreign policy in regard with the Arab-Israeli conflict, others who are against it. And I believe when we speak about America, we have to be as honest as anyone could be about what America really is. However, I always speak my own mind and keep my independence. Does the State Department tell you what you can or cannot say? <laughs> Actually, the uh, uh, State Department tells me, Imam, say anything you like to say. Be yourself. Absolutely no scrutinizing, no limitation of what I can or cannot say. And I have been completely myself. I have been critical of certain things in America, but I also have been affirming of things in America. Arlington, Virginia. Hello. Hi. 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 Uh, I would like to, uh, to tell you that I was in the federal government for many, many years. I'm a Muslim. I'm from the Middle East. I came to this country 35 years ago. I was called a terrorist myself because I was on one of the top officials uh, governing, uh, protecting government resources against fraud, waste, and abuse. I graduated from Georgetown University. I have a two, two degrees. And then when I discovered fraud, they called me a terrorist in 1998 down here in Washington, and I had a big lawsuit. They ruined my career. I wish your guest would teach the American people about Islam, not the, not the foreign countries. Teach people right here. They ruined my career. I was a great 14 step six in the federal government. I was very loyal, protecting government resources against fraud, waste, and abuse, and mismanagement, and misappropriation. For Caller? that sake, they ruined Caller? my life. Caller? Who well, called, who called you a terrorist? One of the uh, one of the employees and one of the, the top officials, and I had a lawsuit. And, and that they, was in 1998. 1998, way before uh, September 11, sir. Okay. Right. Thank you. 
Well, uh, w without any doubt, as I said earlier, there has uh, been there have been some mistakes made uh, uh, within uh, uh, America about Islam. Some people still think that Islam does not belong to America. Some people think that Islam is inherently violent. This is not the case. This is not true. Uh, the eight million American Muslims are a part of the fabric of America, and they will continue to be so. Islam is a religion of peace. Muslims have contributed to America for hundreds of years, and no one can overlook that, that, that reality. However, the mistakes made are mistakes of individuals that have to be confronted, that have to be uh, 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 dealt with in the legal way. Next call for Imam Yahya Hindi comes from Uncasville, Connecticut. Hi. Uh, the point I want to make is, uh, why is um, why are we so concerned about our image in the Muslim world? Why don't we as Americans just, our ideals and the way of life and our freedom and our uh, freedom of women or freedom of speech and the way we live our life, why can't we just be proud of that and instead of trying to impress the world. Thank you, caller Imam. Why should we be concerned? I think we have to be proud of our ideals, Amer American ideas and American values, the great American values that made America become what America has become. However, many people see America only in light of some aspects of its foreign policy. And I said earlier that the great story of America has not been told. Religious diversity in America is a great story that we have to be proud of. And I believe it's a model that people and other nations can look up to. So for me, I would like to tell the world about the true story of America to see America from within. In America, Jews, Christians, and Muslims work on daily basis with each other. I hope to see this everywhere. In America, Shia and Sunnah work with each other on a daily basis. I hope to see this elsewhere. This is, my friend, a war of ideas and ideals. And if we really want to win the war against terrorism, we have to be able to speak to minds, to hearts, and souls of people everywhere. Time for three more calls for our guest, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, uh, I'm calling from Louisville, Kentucky. You know, the American government, like I, I have been in this country for 37 years. American people are honest people and the world with truth, you know. I'm Palestinian. But American government is not honest, it's dishonest more than anybody in the world, you know. As long as they have no honesty, if they don't tell the truth, you know. If somebody, their friend, dictatorship, they say he's good. If somebody good and they are not, they don't believe, they don't understand what I said, they say he's dictatorship. Just like in Saudi Arabia and Jordan. And this is brother, he said, he, American government, they tell him he can tell the truth. No, he, they can tell him what he say, or we not say. He, he shall tell the truth. You know, can say it, some right and some wrong. That what they tell you the State Department say, you say it. You just pop it to the State Department. You know the <laughs> truth. You know, I'm Palestinian too. You know, you thank, know. How thank you, caller. Well, uh, th thank you, my friend. Uh, as uh, I have also said earlier, I have spoken uh, uh, in a criticism of certain aspects of the American government. Uh, and I have uh, said many times that there have been mistakes done within our government. However, I want uh, people to see the truth as well. We need to do justice. America has also done good for Islam and for Muslims in many ways, shapes and forms, despite the wrong and mistakes made by some individuals within the U.S. government. Number two, America is not only its government. America is made of its people and its ideals. And it, 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 we have to be honest to speak about the truth about the inner story of America that brought you to America and made you feel at home in America for 37 years in ways that you might not have felt in many Arab and Muslim countries. Next call for the Imam comes from Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, yes, Imam, it's my pleasure to speak to you. Uh, we have five mosques here in Boca Raton, Florida. One of them is practicing the religion of hate, which is Wahhabism. Uh, I know Wahhabism has been caught in Alexandria, Virginia, and in Dearborn, Michigan, and up in Buffalo, New York. Sorry, caller, we're running out of time. Do you agree that Wahhabism is a religion of hate? You know, for me, I speak a language of dialogue. I speak a language of love. And regardless of those people we love or we hate, we need to reach out to them to tell them the story. 
to, 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 to build the bridges, to make a friends. This is what America is all about. The people you disagree with in America, you need to reach out to them. You invite them to your home, go and visit with, with their home, and come to build the bridges with even those you disagree with. Last call, Birmingham, Alabama. Yes, uh, yes. I just want to ask you, uh, ask the, uh, the guest, how do you feel about the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict? Well, it is a very sad conflict that has claimed the lives of, of hundreds of, thou of thousands since 1948. And I feel saddened about it. I believe that the day shall come when Israelis and Palestinians enjoy that land next to each other as brothers and sisters. I believe Jews, Christians, and Muslims can find ways to make peace in that land. And we do not need to hate, to hate each other. We do not need to exclude each other in the name of God. Let us enjoy the beauty of God in a land that God made holy for all of us. God is not a real estate agent, and therefore let us speak the language of love for all people, Israelis, Jews, Palestinians, Christians, and Arabs. Uh, Imam, do other uh, Muslim clergy do this for the U.S.? Some, yes, yes, you know, other clergy have done this as well. Uh, maybe I am the most traveling Muslim clergy, but this has been open to Muslims and non-Muslims to speak about the untold story of America. Imam Yahya Hindi, uh, Muslim chaplain over at Georgetown University, has been our guest. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for joining us for the last three hours. Here's what's up coming up tomorrow. We're going to continue discussion of politics. We're going to talk about how uh, Speaker Newt Gingrich with Matt Continetti of the Weekly Standard. Lizzie Ratner of the New York Observer will be talking about fundraising for Campaign 2008. Susan Page will join us at 8.30 to talk about a new poll uh, of Iraqis um, that USA Today is featuring on their front page tomorrow morning. We'll be talking about Gulf Coast recovery costs with Chris Cooper of the Wall Street Journal. And finally, Phil Brasher will be on. He's with the Des Moines Register. We'll be talking about federal crop subsidies and the upcoming new farm bill. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. coming up on the C-SPAN network.